Passengers traveling from Kumasi to Ejura on a Mercedes-Benz 207 bus, we are told, are involved in an accident and quite a number of them are reported dead. Speed. He couldn't do anything much to stop. And so sadly, it crashed into the vehicle and all passengers on board have lost their lives. Well, so we'll be getting more from this particular accident. My name is Bright Nanamfu, and this is today's big story. We are told that all passengers on board that particular vehicle traveling on the Kumasi Ejura Road were involved in an accident. We're told that uh, a number of them have been confirmed. That police are giving figures that we'll have to uh, definitely verify from our reporter on the ground, Mohammed Nodin, who will be doing it very soon. But we're told that the tipper truck had rushed onto the road without looking out for oncoming vehicles. The bus is said to have crashed into the rear of the tipper truck. This, we were told, brought to the fore the issue of using two seven Benz buses for long distance traveling. Mohammed Nuruddin is right there. Now, uh, Mohammed, thanks so much for coming through. Now, uh, the policeman who spoke earlier said all passengers on board that vehicle confirmed dead. We have another conflicting report indicating that nine confirmed dead. Now, can you tell us the number of casualties? Right. Nine people have been confirmed dead. Mm. Uh, and earlier, uh, we, we earlier... We, we earlier it was eight, and we spoke with the district police commander, man from district police commander, superintendent Bismarck Ajapon, and he told us that all passengers on board were dead. But uh, some few minutes ago, I uh, tried to, when I had an information that nine people have now been confirmed dead, I tried speaking with him to uh, find out whether. He had that information too, and he also confirmed that actually nine people have been confirmed dead, mm. and all other those, uh, the rest are, are still at the hospital. Uh, uh, do we know how many people were on board the vehicle? Uh, right. We can't actually get the number of passengers on board, uh, but you know, 207, this, this particular 207 is supposed to uh take about 53 people so we are suspecting that 23 people were in that particular two mm. base bars mm. and do we know the the state or the condition of those who uh, have been admitted at the various hospitals some of them are i can say some of them are in critical condition uh, earlier with uh, some authorities and they are saying some of them are Critical condition at their hospital. You know, some of them were the dead. The dead bodies were sent to Ankasi. They were they were sent to Ankasi uh, hospital, and the others were sent to Kompanoji uh, teaching hospital. And then we, the report we are now having is that you know it is a boundary. That particular place where accident occurred is a boundary between uh, the Kwabri, the Kwabri East district, and that of Mampo. Hmm. So and. and some few minutes ago, I had an information that the man from this, the man from police, now taking the issue in their own hands, and, and so uh, any information that we need, we would have to speak with the man from uh, police. Uh, how much do we know of these passengers uh, who were on the bus? How much do we know about where they were traveling to and where they were from? They were from Kumasi, traveling to Ejura. Mm -hmm. And you know, right from Kumasi, uh, if you are heading towards Tapu, you head towards Tapu, and then 
you after that then you move into Pankorono, then you move into Kwabiri district. I think there were some just some few minutes uh, drive away from Kwabiri East district that the accident occurred. Mm. You know, we understand the tipper truck was trying to join the main road, mm. and sadly, driver of the tipper truck did not look at the side of the road to find out whether another car was coming. So the uh, Benz, the 207 Benz bus uh, appeared on the tipper truck and then he crashed into it and no, that was how the accident occurred. That was how it happened. But uh, if please, uh, the police service has started investigations, uh, the, the particular point where the accident occurred, um, has uh, the vehicles been cleared? And what is the traffic situation there at the moment, if you have that kind of information? Yeah, the, the, the vehicle has been cleared. I, we, I was there when the vehicle was cleared. And the moment it was cleared, I, you know, when it happened, residents were there to witness what happened. And so the moment the vehicle was cleared, uh, most of them left the scene. So uh, as I'm speaking now, you know, it's close to one uh, petrol uh, shell. And uh, most people, it's just a, some few minutes away from a residential area. So people were actually came there and then uh, to witness what happened. Mm. But I can, but as I'm speaking now, the vehicle has been cleared. Uh, and you said earlier that uh, the Mampon police are now in charge. Uh, uh, preliminary investigations, anything uh, coming out yet? With the Mampon police, we have not gotten any information from there yet. Mm. Uh, we are yet to find out what they are doing to what they are doing and the information the investigation they for they also uh, gathered so far but uh, Brian, uh, the, we, we we also spoke with the the, the regional director of the um, the national road safety commission and he was saying that uh, the driver the driver as at the time we were at the scene the driver was nowhere to be found and he was saying they will do everything possible to get the driver, and if he is found guilty, he would face the records of the law. Mm. Right, Mohamed Nuruddin, thanks so much for speaking to me here. Uh, but the, the accident uh, brings into uh, sharp focus the issue of uh, licenses to commercial uh, drivers. Now, uh, the DVLA is responsible for uh, granting uh, licenses to commercial drivers, uh, but exactly what does one need to do to get a driving license uh, this is where we turn our focus on as we try and look at the accident that happened on the kumasi Ejra road we'll be speaking to uh the dvla to find out exactly what they take uh, into consideration granting permit for people to drive on the road but what we'll be uh, looking at uh, the issue of safety on commercial vehicles. Uh, what exactly it means uh, to uh, make sure a vehicle is safe and our authorities, our agencies, ensuring that the vehicles we, we drive around in are safe. Let's go to uh, Vaskai. Let me speak to the Executive Director of the Bureau of Public Safety, Nanaya Kwada. He will tell us a few lessons about uh, safety uh, when it comes to Pass commercial passengers. Now, Nanaya, thanks so much for your time once again. Thank you very much for having me and a very good evening to your viewers. Mm, right. Now, first of all, uh, let's take a look at passengers and commercial vehicles. Now, by standards, what should passengers look out for uh, when boarding vehicles? Well, basically, um, we advise that before passengers board vehicles, um, they take the time to make a few cursory observations of the vehicle they are boarding. Essentially, you are talking about um, just having a look at the tires, a visual assessment of the tires, a visual assessment of the interior of the vehicle. And um, as you drive along the road, you keep your eye on the driver so that from time to time you could um, draw his attention to um, probably his speed limits and occasionally um, a few spots on the road that might require his attention that 
it turns out that probably he's oblivious of. Mm. It, it will be uh, uh, talking to the DVLA. Now, uh, this is what a passenger would need to do. But let us look at our agencies, transport agencies, particularly the DVLA. How should they involve themselves in ensuring that the, the vehicles we sit in are safe for public use? Well, um, thank you very much. Um, it's unfortunate that um, I find the subject a bit interesting because um, mm. it's almost as if everybody in this country is engaged in what we call platitudes because things that we are going to share this evening on this platform are things that have been shared, you know, time and time and again. Um, the DVLA, the MTTU, the National Road Safety Commission, the Ministry of Transport, I seriously think that nothing that will be said tonight will be new to them. What we want to move beyond is to call on the Ministry of Interior to take this issue of road crashes in our country very serious. It is actually, um, a, you know, by our gradients, it is a national security threat right. to this country. That we have um, in excess of 2,000 accidents, 2,000 fatalities a year in this country um, ascribed to road um, crashes is a source of worry that we must be looking at. This, if you explain, is about four or five planes, um, sorry, in excess of about 10 aeroplanes going down, right. you know, in a year in a country. And I think that we must take this serious. Now, if, if, you, if you say we must take this serious, the, the, the concern is that some of these vehicles uh, do not even go to the DVLA premises, and yet they have roadworthiness and they are on our roads. Is the DVLA missing something? Well, like I, I said, I listed all the agencies um, that, you know, play a role in licensing of vehicles and licensing of even drivers. And I have said that it is almost impossible. It's a network, um, you know, um, engagement right. that these organizations must make. It's, almost, it's not possible to place all the blame at the feet of the DVLA, which is why I've said that is DVLA, MTTU, National Road Safety Commission, and the Ministry of Interior that must come together to tackle this national security threat. And if we limit the discussion to just the DVLA, we mm. will miss the point mm. because the, the system is structured such that if you are able to escape the stringent requirements of the DVLA, the MTTU must strap you down. It is structured that if you are able to go through the DVLA, the MTTU, you should be caught in the net of the National Road Safety Commission for in terms of education. Mm. If you miss all of these, then if you're able to go through all of these and you are still on the road, then we have a problem, mm. which is why we come to the fact that all these three agencies must team up and make a very tight network so that you cannot evade the net of these three agencies. Mm. But as it stands now, their network is very porous, um, is, is a, a very porous or probably almost inexistent. Right. And then, and that allows for drivers and vehicles to go through and everybody has his way on the road. Mm. As it stands now, um, Bright, you might, you, might, you might be interested to know that I have two cars and if I go to the DVLA to register a car, they create a new folder for me. Right. Why is it not possible that if I have already one car and I'm registering another car, it should, why is it not possible to just add on so that right. I don't have to go through the whole process of a registering a new car? And that makes it very difficult. So everybody, once you leave the DVLA, you become anonymous on the road, virtually right. yeah. anonymous right. on the road. Right. Now, now, hold it there. Let, let me speak to uh, the Aguna District Police Commander, ASP Francis Asante. Uh, they are now in charge of investigations. They have taken over investigations of the accident there. And ASP Asante, thanks so much for your time. Yeah, thank you very much.
Right. Now, first of all, uh, if the police uh, has uh, done uh, preliminary investigations, uh, what might have gone wrong? Uh, my information is that uh, there was a 207 bus loaded with passengers from uh, uh, Kumasi towards Ejura around about 10.30 this morning. And on reaching a spot just after Asuna Sunkwanta, there's a query uh, mine there, a query mine. At the junction there, there was this uh, man, this keeper uh, uh, truck, right. that has loaded some query goods. And it was uh, joining the main motor road from the query site. And uh, the information is that it was it's alleged he joined the road without observing the other road users. And so this 207 tied into it and caused the accident. Mm. And, and uh, that means that uh, preliminary investigations uh, uh, is proving that it's a, a driver mistake. Okay, I am not up to that level mm. to say who went uh, wrong at, that, at this particular time because investigation is still continuing. But on the spot investigation, revealed that the driver of the tipper truck joined the road, the main road, without taking due uh, care and attention. Can you confirm uh, those who have been admitted to the hospital, uh, their condition at the moment? Um, on the whole, nine people died uh, on this accident, eight on the spot, and one at the Ankafi Methodist Hospital. Then uh, six people were sent to the Aguna Hospital, Government Hospital. Um, five were sent to Ankafi, and one was sent straight to Confanochi Teaching Hospital. And later on our visit in the afternoon, later in the afternoon, two were referred from Aguna Hospital to Confanochi Hospital teaching hospital. Then uh, two were also referred from the Ankasi hospital to the Konfanochi teaching hospital. Hmm. That is the situation as at the time that we visited lastly. And uh, just before I let you go, uh, the scene of the accident, uh, very sure it's been cleared and traffic is moving uh, smoothly. Exactly. The scene was immediately cleared. Uh, we call in the uh, heavy duty machines of the road safety company, they came as far as from Kumasi to clear those vehicles, and they are now in the custody of the police. Thank you so much for speaking to me. ASP Asante is the Aguna District Police Commander there confirming the accident and uh, the number of injured as well as those dead. Now, now it's all on the phone. We'll be uh, trying hard to get the DVLA to uh, uh, react to some uh, concerns being raised. But uh, Nanea, let, let's look at what is coming from the Aguna District Police. Now, uh, on the spot investigations uh, clearly shows that uh, the, the driver uh, moved onto the main road without observing certain road uh, traffic regulations. It comes then into focus the, 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 the role of the driver in the whole uh, road safety issue. The concern is that perhaps uh, the need to take another look at who gets a license to drive becomes very vital now. Absolutely. Absolutely that um and even going beyond that what the all these um you know drivers licensing is uh, drivers uh, training institutions coming up they need to even go to the extent of looking at what sort of um uh, what 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 is the content of their curricula what are people being taught at the driving schools how are these being taught we all talk about defensive driving so that if I'm approaching a junction, and even though I have a right of way, I am careful so that I can avoid this reckless um, tipper truck driver. Mm. So if we don't come up to the very content of the curriculum, what is going into making someone a driver, we would miss the point. That is very, very essential. Mm. Having come to that, what sort of measures do we have in place? for people who get involved in accidents. We live in a country where 
we all have insurance coverage for our cars. Very few people, um, you know, um, notify their insurance companies about accidents. And, and these accidents, very few of them are reported to the DVLE. We live in a country where people do not have points on their licenses. And so everybody gets away with anything. People drive, kill people, and the next day they are behind the wheels. Mm. People drive, you know, and the, the whole system must be, you know, recalibrated to, for want of a better way, that the insurance companies, DVLA, MTT, they need to have a shared data system so that we keep it tight. Elsewhere, people are even scared to even bump into other people's car. A simple bump, they are scared because they know that aside the law taking them on, the following year or the next time they are going to renew their insurances, mm. their insurance premium is going to go up. But we don't see that in this country. People and, and do so things that, and get up. Now, now, uh, so this, it's uh, the, the making of the system we are running, or it is simply that we do not pay that uh, attention to road safety? Well, it's both ways. It's, it's, it's both ways because they are linked. The, the two are not mutually exclusive. It is the making of the system and it is the fact that we are not paying attention to road safety. Because I, I find it unbelievable that we live in a country where every day we have a minimum of six accidents on our road leading to fatalities and we do not have any concrete radical program targeted at you know um, minimizing road safety incidents and as if you go to the national road safety commission um, and you get a, a very good graph of how our accident rates have gone over the years you realize that it's zigzag you cannot see a very um, consistent reduction trend mm. you understand so it is almost as if we've left everything for chance in this country when it comes to road safety. Mm. Uh, we're getting ready, ready to wrap up this interview, but uh, looking at the kind of system we're running, uh, how should the public ensure their own safety? Uh, if the system running is not that good to, to keep us safe, how do we ensure our safety on the roads and whilst driving, as a driver and as a passenger? Well, we have said that um, when you sit behind the wheel, Everybody else is an idiot. You are the only sensible person on the road. And so you must drive as such that everybody else is an idiot. And you are the most, and that's what we call defensive driving. So you are driving and you are keeping your eyes on the road, making sure you know what is happening around you, behind you, both sides. Checks on the driver, uh, checks on the vehicle uh, we, we, we drive in. Which way should we go? Let's wrap up this conversation. Well, it should be possible um, as a passenger uh, for you to draw the attention of a driver to something that you think has gone wrong on this car. Um, I have a couple of times been to the station and I have seen very worn out tires. Um, if I speak to the driver, they are recalcitrant. I have moved ahead um, to speak to the station masters that this car cannot be on the road. Only two days ago, I saw a car on the N1, a passing um, a trotro, if you like, on the N1 with a bar at, behind it falling. I have to drive close to the driver, um, signal him to stop, and once he stops, I tell him, you can't be driving like this on the road. This may not harm your, your car, but if it falls off, it's going to, you know, um, affect the car coming from behind you. And he thanked me and promised he was going to deal with it. This is the bit that all of us must contribute into making our roads safe. Mm. That when we see it, we must talk about it. We must not see it and look the other way around. If the law enforcement, it, it, I always say that public safety is a shared responsibility. And once we see something, we must talk about it. If possible, draw the law enforcement agencies attention to it and get it fixed right there and then because if we close an eye or we turn our eye 
to the other way, it might be someone um, close to us in the next minute. Thank you so much for speaking to me. Nanaya Kwada, the Executive Director of the Bureau for Public Safety there, uh, talking to me about becoming safe on the road. We've been trying hard to get uh, the uh, acting chief executive of the Driver and Vehicle Licensing Authority. He uh, said he's still in a meeting and we'll try and get him to react to uh, the issue of who gets a driving license to drive on our roads as well as the safety of the vehicles, commercial vehicles that we sit in. This is the second, the first part of the show. The second uh, part is coming soon. We'll be staying on the issue of road safety. They, how important is the role of the passenger in ensuring that you get your destination uh, safe? This first part is ending now. When Marian joins me, we'll be talking more about road safety. Thanks so much for staying there. I'm coming back in a moment.